Hey, what's up guys? Good to have you guys back. I got a little tutorial today that I haven't done in a while and I think maybe it's time to revisit this situation because I don't know, it's 2022 and it's time to talk about OBS settings and stream quality and whatnot. So a lot of people come at me every now and then and ask about different types of OBS settings. How do you get your stream to look so good? How do you do this? How do you do that? How do I get the best settings? What are the best settings? What does everything mean? Well, I'm here for a nice like OBS settings for dummies situation, okay? I'm a dummy. Maybe you're a dummy too. I don't know. Let's be dummies together. Let me show you guys today how to set up your OBS so that everything's looking mighty nice. And it basically comes down to your hardware. Now, on top of all your gear, you also need some good internet. So, you know, I, I happened to luck out and got myself uh, Verizon Fios, the, the fiber, like the one gig up and the one gig down. It's so nice, dude. I can't go back to comcast and all that stuff now what it really comes down to is your upload speed now back in the day when i started streaming i had five upload uh five megabytes upload uh, megabits megabytes i had five upload okay and usually things are in the sense of like 200 down uh five up 10 up 15 up 20 up 500 up i don't know whatever you have man but that number dictates how far you can take your bit rate for streaming and it comes down to kilobytes per second or whatever, you know, KBPS, you, that thing you got to set up inside of OBS. Now, inside of your OBS, you're going to have some settings. So here we have OBS open and ready to be utilized. So let me go ahead and just jump into the settings and get rid of the, the canvas and all that stuff. You don't really need that part for now. In all of your settings, you're only going to really need to focus on two settings. And on top of knowing what your gear is, you just need to focus on two things. I'm talking about output as well as video. Now, these will dictate in terms of what's your, you know, your size canvas as well as your output as well as uh you know what your quality is gonna be like now first things first when choosing to figure out how you're gonna stream you kind of have to figure out what gear you have to stream with now if you have some older gtx gpus and some older intel you know cpus or amds or something like that like you're gonna have to kind of figure out where your settings are gonna be balanced and the whole thing with stream quality is finding the perfect balance for you and for what type of streamer you are are you a two pc streamer are you a single PC streamer? Now, keep in mind that everything that we talk about here today is basically going to be for a single PC as well, but you just have to acknowledge that any game or any application that you're playing is going to tax your computer in, you know, resources and whatnot. So depending on how much, you know, memory you have and all that kind of stuff, it's going to come down to like what's being sucked out of your machine and how much you can actually stream to your viewers. So in like the worst possible situation, let's say you're playing like a crazy heavy CPU game and you're streaming off of your CPU or something like that, you're gonna start to see a lot of drop frames because you're utilizing OBS to stream as well as a game and they're trying to compete with each other to fight over resources of what's gonna take priority. So, you know, you can sometimes dumb down the game quality or dumb down your, your stream quality to kind of compensate for a single PC setup. In this case, we're just gonna talk about a dual PC setup. Anything you see here, just remember, that you also gonna have programs on top of everything that you're doing. So even when you find the perfect balance for stream quality, uh, you gotta know that you are gonna be playing programs and games and, and your, you know, Chrome is gonna be open or Safari or whatever you're using to browse the internet or, you know, play music or whatever. That's all gonna take up extra resources on top of everything you're about to see here. So keep that in mind while moving forward. All right, so when it comes down to streaming quality, basically the way that I test is by just recording using my streaming settings so you can do that in the recording tab you just choose use my streaming settings and and it's quite simple so you don't have to go live to figure out what your quality is going to look like you can always record on your machine and then just play it back and take a look that's kind of what we're doing here today i basically took some some gameplay of player unknowns battlegrounds although now it's just called battlegrounds i think so yeah did, i don't PUBG. is it called PUBG? I don't know what it's called but it just went free to play so That's going to be uh, our, our test here. Basically, I just took some footage from in-game. I got in a car, kind of drove around, and you can kind of see right here, this is the actual gameplay that we're looking at here. Now, it's all 1920 by 1080. I'm, I'm shooting at ProRes HQ, so it's giving you really high-quality uh, video footage from the actual games themselves with no artifacting or anything like that. And that way, I'm going to take that, that video that I recorded from PUBG, and we're going to stick it inside of OBS as a media source, and I'm going to play that and then just record it in multiple different ways to kind of show you what your bit rates and your, your streams might look like. When you're playing a certain game, some games are really heavy on making your quality look bad. And 
you know, anything with grass or trees or very high motion or anything like that can really affect your stream quality. Now, if you're playing a card game on PC or on a console or something like that, it's going to look fine. You don't have to worry too much about all this. When you're playing a game like Apex or uh, Call of Duty or something like that, you're, you're going to have to realize that all the items in the world that are moving across your screen need to be rendered and encoded and everything and then sent out to your viewers. Now, it's kind of hard when there's a lot of stuff happening on screen. It's a lot harder for your machine to encode that to send it out. Now, if you're just looking at a blank open field, your machine's not having to work too hard to make that look good. By default, uh, you're gonna get some default simple settings, but I recommend you take it out of simple mode, take it into advanced mode. It's really simple. Just go over to your output, click on the output mode, and change that from simple to advanced. Now you're gonna unlock a whole plethora of different things for you to play around with. It's pretty fun. You're gonna have to choose what you wanna stream with. Is that gonna be your X264? That's your CPU. Or are you gonna do NVIDIA, NVENC, H.264 new, and that's gonna be your GPU. So uh, now if you have an AMD or whatever, it doesn't matter, you're still gonna be utilizing the CPU or the GPU, your graphics card or your processor. By default, it automatically makes you select X.264, your CPU. So let's just take a look at what default OBS is kind of giving you right off the bat with if you were just to open up the program and go live. So you can see here, it looks pretty gross. I mean, it's not the best quality. It's acceptable, but it's 720p. 30 FPS, 2,500 kilobytes per second, and it just doesn't look that good. Now you gotta keep in mind, like while using your X264 preset inside of your settings, that's gonna tax your machine, right? That's gonna make your machine like, ugh, like really struggle to uh, run everything else. So keep that in mind that while you're playing these games that are already taking up resources, now your streaming and your encoding is taking up more resources. That's where this whole balance things comes in. You know what I'm saying? You gotta balance out your settings to you know, fit your PC. When you are choosing your output scaled resolution, that resolution is what your viewers are gonna see. Now, the higher you go of that resolution, the harder your machine's got to work to encode that, and you need more bitrate to make that look good. So I recommend maximum 1080p, uh, especially if you're streaming on Twitch. However, if you're on YouTube and other platforms, you get more bitrate, which means you can kind of up that a little bit higher. But let's just stick with 1080p because I feel like most people like 1080p and it still is the pretty much the standard right now. By default, your first X264 preset, the, the default one is 720p at 30 FPS. Now we took that footage right there and I just wanted to bring it up to 1080p. So we brought it up to 1080p. So now we have 720p at 30 FPS and 1080p at 30 FPS. And now this is kind of the quality difference between the two. I didn't change the bit rate. The quality goes down a little bit because you're, you're giving it more resolution, but not any more bit rate. So it's going to look worse. Now we're going to change the frame rate to 1080p at 60 FPS. So we're going to take a little side by side of the 720p at 30 FPS and the 1080p at 60 FPS. Now one's going to look smooth, but it's going to look a little uglier. So the 1080p at 60 FPS in theory should look way worse and it probably does right here if you're looking at it you're basically giving it double the frame rate as well as you're going to need now 1080p instead of 720p you need so much more bit rate to make that 1080p look good because it needs more to make it look nicer as you're trying to figure out your setup basically you just want to keep balancing out your bit rate with your cpu preset with your video resolution all in one. Now that's another thing I wanted to talk about and that's a video preset. There's a bunch of different presets out there to really fine tune uh, your quality settings. So I think by default, you're forced to choose very fast, uh, but you can also choose the, the, the slower options. Now, the slower you go down on that list, the slower, the better the look, but the worse for your machine. And now you're, you know, you're getting less quality for your games and everything. So again, all about balance. Now X264, you can actually get better quality than the GPU, uh, you know, streams, but at the cost of your machine being really used. So basically my streams right now, I use a, uh, a 3950X from AMD, and that allowed me to push my, uh, my quality down to a slow preset, as well as uh, bumping and messing around some other settings to really fine tune and make that the best that I can. But that pretty much covers it for X264. You don't really need to worry too much about anything else other than those basic options of uh, your, your CPU preset, your bit rate, and your resolution and frame rate. Those are like the four big ones that you need to uh, consider when getting your stuff uh, all situated. Now, moving over to uh, NVENC or uh, the, your GPU to stream off of that thing, it's gonna be a lot easier. You're gonna you're gonna find yourself having a lot easier of a time to stream off of y your GPU rather than your CPU. And that's because it's so much easier to stream off your GPU, especially if it's an RTX card because they, they got these little chips in there. You stream off that little chip, it's great. If you have an RTX card, stream off of that. Basically any RTX card. I had an RTX 2060 in my machine for a while. I was streaming off of that, but 
but it basically hits around now technical stuff here it basically equals about medium of the cpu preset inside of uh, obs so and, you know, if you want to take it further than medium, you're going to need a, a better CPU to stream off of. By default, again, with NVENC, it's going to offer you 720p at 30 FPS if you were just a default uh, select your GPU. And here's what it looks like. It's not great. It's about on par with the X264, very fast, uh, you know, 2,500 kilobytes per second uh, stream quality. Now, there's some other stuff that they have in terms of options here. But before we get to that, so here is 720p at 30 FPS, 1080p at 30 FPS, and 1080p at 60 FPS. All in order, all the same bit rate. Now you can kind of see uh, what each one looks like and, and what it's maybe doing for you. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a bump in terms of resolution, but you're losing a little bit more quality. That's a low bit rate. 2,500 is very easy. That's like saying you only have 2.5 upload speed. And I think the majority of people have a little bit more than that. Twitch does recommend 6,000. But hey, spoiler alert, you can actually push that thing all the way to 8,000. Don't go any higher than that, okay? Don't do it. Let me tell you why. Twitch has a cap, all right? They have a cap. They have a lot of people streaming to the platform. They have a cap. And if you reach that cap and go beyond that cap, they're going to be like, hey, this guy's going beyond that cap. And they will auto down res you down to 720p at 30 or 60 FPS. I don't know. They'll also cap your bit rate. So no matter what you're sending out, they're just chopping it off. And they're saying like, no, 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 no. You don't get any more. We're going to change that for you, okay? You can take it all the way up to 8,000. Thousand. The higher you do set that bit rate, for some people it might be harder to watch. But you know, if you're a partner, you get some transcoding options for setting you know your resolution as a viewer. But you know, if you're a non-partner, whatever, and you don't have transcode options, and you're kind of forced to be at that resolution, some people on their mobile phones and whatnot might not be able to watch so easily because you know you need a lot of download speed to be able to watch some of these uh, bigger streams. So it's kind of like a balance here again, where you know if you go with like three thousand, six thousand, eight thousand, you're kind of choosing what is easier for for you know the, all your viewers to watch, and depending on where they are in the world, where they are, uh, you know, if they have a phone on a computer, uh, you know, hardline or Wi-Fi, you know, maybe they can watch, maybe they can. I don't know. Regardless, I leave mine as a partner set to uh, eight thousand, and people have all their little transcoding options to select from, like two forty p, four eighty six, you know, seven twenty, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't matter. So people have those options there if they can't watch my highest quality. Uh, resolution. So here's the problem with setting your, your presets and such too high. You start to get lost, dropped, nasty, laggy frames, and it ends up looking really stuttery and gross for your viewers. And you kind of see here that I ended up taking my X264 a little too high here. So when choosing your bitrate and choosing your resolution and all that kind of stuff, you got to fine tune and figure out what your machine can actually handle. And I wasn't handling too well with the uh, the X264 option. So with my stream setup, I think I would have gone with the, the graphics card setup, the, the NVENC, uh, is streaming option because I think I could push that quality further than I can using the X264 option. Now, keep in mind that you're going to be playing games and stuff too, and this was on a single PC. I was maxing out a lot of my uh, my CPU and OBS usages by streaming off of X264. After a lot of uh, kind of messing around here, I ended up finding a couple of options that are acceptable for X264 on uh, my machine here. And so the first one was streaming at 1080p at 60 FPS at 8000 bitrate with the faster encoder. Now, this allowed me to stream pretty decently if it was a dedicated stream PC. Now, if I had anything else open on my PC, I'm pretty sure it would have tanked the quality. I probably wouldn't be able to play a game, but let's say I had a capture card in my machine and I'm just capturing another system, a console, another PC, it would have been totally fine and would have looked pretty decent. And here's that kind of gameplay right here. So you can see it, it doesn't look that bad. You know, there's some, there's some issues here and there, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. Now, if I actually wanted to take it to a slower preset, I could go medium, but I have to sacrifice the resolution to get there. So if I stream at 720p at 60 FPS, uh, now I can go to medium at 8000 bitrate and it's looking pretty good. Uh, it's not too bad. A couple little uh, edgy, ugly stuff here and there. But for the most part, it looks pretty good and it's almost as good as an RTX card. However, I'm sacrificing a little resolution because I'm streaming off my CPU. So again, this is another situation that I would need to use a dual PC setup to really maximize this kind of quality, utilizing a capture card to you know send that game footage over to my PC. So here's a little side by side of the ProRes HQ that I recorded directly from the game, as well as uh, putting that video through OBS. And uh, here's the output at 8,000 bit rate, NVENC, max quality, the best settings I can put with the, uh, the GPU. And uh, here's a little side by side. Now, last thing I want to kind of show you guys is kind of the comparison between the 1080p 60 FPS 8000 bit rate with the GPU and as good as I could get with the CPU. So again, here's the last little test here. It's a uh, 1080 at 60 FPS 8000 bit rate versus X264 at uh, 1080p 60 FPS faster the preset. So it is going to be a little less good of quality, but 
uh, you know, if you have a CPU and you maybe you don't have an RTX card or something like that, maybe that's going to be the better option. You don't know until you kind of fine tune and adjust what the, uh, the perfect balance is. You have bit rate, frames per second, resolution, and your encoder. Those are all the big four that you need to change to basically get your stream quality as good as you can. You got to fine tune and adjust all those little numbers to kind of find the best little, you know, spot. Uh, again, consider all this stuff while you're uh, setting up your streams and setting up your uh, your canvases and, and your, your outputs and all that kind of stuff and your resolutions and all that. And, you know, go out there and, and have some fun streaming. You know, I don't think 720p is that bad. I don't think 30 FPS is that bad either. So you just got to go with where you feel is best for your stream setups. Now, if you're streaming off a laptop, you're going to have to dumb down these settings. It's, it's pretty hard on your machine to, to play games and stream off a laptop that's already pretty limited in terms of its hardware. And it's got one of these new bad boys. And in that case, just try things out and see where it goes. Hopefully this video helps you out. And uh, if you have any questions, put them down below. Check out my live streams or my other videos coming up. Uh, activator.tv. If you want to check out any of my gear or anything like that, I have a link to it down below. My little kit channel, kit.co slash activator. Any questions down below or join the Discord. Hang out there. Whatever you want. Come by the streams. I'll help you out live. All right. Catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you. Like and sub. Classic statement, right? Like and sub. Anyways, I'll catch you next time. Take care. Peace.